Welcome to GoPower's latest video covering how solar works and why you should add solar to your RV. We will cover the benefits of solar and break down how solar works into easily understandable sections. By the end of this video, we hope you come away with the basic knowledge of solar to make an informed decision on what type of GoPower solar products would suit your RV off-grid needs. Why add solar to your RV? First, there is the benefit of saving money. This is one we are pretty sure everyone can get behind. Solar extends the life of batteries by up to 50%, which means replacing your batteries less often, resulting in more money in your pocket. Zero fuel cost is another huge money-saving benefit. With the rising fuel costs, you won't have to worry about powering your generator with this costly resource to run essential DC loads. Solar provides freedom to explore, away from noisy RV parks and costly hookups. You will also enjoy the sounds of nature with the quiet alternative of solar and not the noise of a generator. Not only is solar clean and quiet, but it is also renewable. You can be in a remote place and not have to worry about where the closest RV hookup may be. How Solar Works Here, we look at solar and mobile power components as an analogy of a gas station and a car. This offers a simplistic explanation of how they work together. In essence, solar is basically all about charging batteries. It does not power anything itself. The battery bank it charges is what runs your DC and AC power loads. Given this knowledge, we can look at the solar panel as the gas station. Whenever there is light from the sun, whether overcast or full sun, it gathers the energy and feeds it to the battery or gas tank in this analogy, as fuel. More solar panels will draw in more fuel, however, you need to balance that with a proper fuel tank. So having more panels is not a benefit unless you have a battery bank to store the excess power or fuel. This brings us to the solar controller, which acts as the fuel valve shut off. It ensures the battery isn't overloaded and receives the proper amount of fuel required to safely operate the system. As with the balance between the panels and battery bank, a proper solar controller is required to protect your solar system. For instance, a 10 amp solar controller is well paired with a system comprising of a 190 watt and under solar panel, paired with a 100 AH battery bank. While a 30 amp or greater controller is required for larger systems of 200 watts or more, along with a battery bank of 200 AH or more. The first three parts of this analogy are good if you are just running DC or essential loads. But what if you want to run appliances or electronics like a laptop, coffee maker, or even a CPAP machine? These AC loads need a bit more power, which is achieved through an inverter or engine in this analogy. The inverter takes DC power from the battery and converts it to 120 volt AC power. We highly recommend our pure sine wave inverters for these loads as they replicate the power outlets found in residential homes. Let's expand a bit on the solar panel. Specifically, what are they? Solar panels are made up of a series of energy-collecting silicon wafers called cells. They are rated in watts, volts, and amps. They use radiated energy, or light, from the sun to produce DC electricity. Did you know, GoPower solar panels are made in the US and Canada. As well, all of our products are engineered in Canada. Solar cell technology. While solar cell technology is getting more and more efficient, there are three kinds of panels that are generally used. Polycrystalline consists of a solid made up of many small crystals. They generally see a 13 to 16% efficiency and are offered with a 25 plus year warranty. Amorphous panels are made of thin film that degrades in power when exposed to the sun. Because of this, they are better for low-light environments and require a larger surface area to produce power comparable to poly and monocrystalline panels. They operate at a 6-8% to 8 efficiency. 
Monocrystalline are the more common panels used. They are made up of silicon crystallized into a single crystal. Monocrystalline panels operate at 15 to 20% efficiency and are also offered with a 25 or more year warranty. Moving on to solar controllers, they have the important function of maintaining the life of batteries by protecting them from overcharging and limiting the current flowing into the battery bank from the solar array. Common Solar Questions What do I need to go off-grid? As we touched on before, DC power is needed for essentials like lights, a water pump, or a three-way fridge. For these requirements, a base solar kit with a battery bank is sufficient. However, if you enjoy some simple luxuries of home such as a coffee maker, a laptop, and a TV, you will need to add an inverter or better yet, an inverter charger to your solar system. Anything from a 1,500 watt to 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter is generally sufficient to operate most loads, depending on their size. How do I know how much solar is needed? Here are some points to consider when determining this value. Camping season generally runs from May to October to maximize sun exposure. One 200 watt solar panel charges batteries at 9.6 amps per hour. Knowing this, we multiply 9.6 amps by 6 hours of sunlight per day, which gives us 57.6 amps per day, per panel. The average consumption for a family of 4 is 50 amps per day. Which means a single 200 watt solar panel is enough to relieve the battery woes of a family of 4 and their DC loads. How do I choose the right size battery bank? Using the 200 watt panel info from the previous example, we can pair the proper battery bank size. Therefore, a 200 watt panel would need two 100 AH AGM batteries or one 100 AH lithium battery. Remember, as you add more solar, you need to add more batteries. We recommend using the Go Power Solar Calculator for a more concise calculation. A link to the instructional video on how to use the calculator will be provided in the video description. Let's summarize the three general users. First, we have the weekenders. Those who generally spend one or two nights out and use 100 to 200 watts of power. Many weekend off-grid campers start off with a minimalist approach and usually only need limited DC power. The next step up would be the week-long campers who use between 400 to 600 watts. Adventurous RVers who prefer remote locations may opt for a portable system in addition to mounted panels. Portable systems allow you to park in the shade and charge in the sun. And finally, we have the power users or full-time RVers who require 1000 plus watts per day. These power users want the conveniences of home and require a robust rooftop solar installation generally consisting of four or more 200 watt panels, a fairly large battery bank and an inverter charger. Enjoyed this video? Be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and check out our video covering our advanced lithium batteries and how to wire them. For more information, visit the links in the video description or go to gopowersolar.com.